going to call the meeting to order. And before we um, commence with the adoption of the agenda, I want to uh, call Mr. Reed up to the front. Arnold Reed. Mm -hmm. This is a small token of appreciation for the many hours that you gave to serving on the Columbia Basin Trust Community Initiatives at, um, what are the letters again, sorry? CIP Education Committee. Okay, you know what that stands for. We really appreciate the time that you gave. We're sorry to see you leave. And I believe you're probably one of the uh, members that uh, was there since the inception of the Education Committee. Right, yeah. So thank you very much. We well, appreciate the time you gave, and whenever you feel like coming back, the door is always open. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, it was an absolutely enjoyable task for all these years because you get to see all the wonderful things that the people in this community do, and mm -hmm. and it's just uh, every year it's, it was really exciting. But I'm just getting. You want to do something Part of here, you know, oh, okay. and all the rest of it. Oh, it's okay. very difficult okay. to continue, so thank you very uh, And thank you very much. much. Appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. Your discernment made all the many hours over the years that I gave to get Vail Mount included in the Columbia Basin Trust made it worthwhile. Thank you. So agenda item 2.1, I should uh, like a motion please to adopt the agenda. Kate Reimer and Blanchett. And uh, there is uh, one additional item, and uh, that is that there uh, will be uh, an in-camera meeting as well. So as amended. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Adoption of the minutes of the May 9, 2017 regular meeting of council. Reimer and Blanchett. Are there any errors or omissions? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Motion to adopt the uh, minutes of the April 25th special committee of the whole meeting, please. Salt and Targerson, are there any errors or omissions in that one? Yes, Councillor Salt. I just resolution numbering. We have two resolution number 01 slash 17. Second one should be number two. Probably just a glitch in the system again. Okay. Ms. Shepard is uh, correcting that. Okay, if there's nothing further, all in favor? Carried. Yeah. Agenda item 6.1. We have uh, correspondence uh, regarding the ALS uh, and our greater society. Uh, motion please we have the recommendation that they be granted permission to use the village tent for an event on June 4 2017 subject to a damage deposit of $400 being provided to the village no later than June 1st and Blanchett and Torgerson is there any discussion hearing none all in favor Carry. Agenda item 6.2, the Vermont Alliance Club request for a resolution of support. Recommendation reads that the following resolution be put forth by Council in support of the Vermont Lions Club application to the Northern Development Initiative Trust Community Halls and Recreation Facilities Program. Council's wish, Torgerson and Blanchett. And that is that the village supports the application to NDIT from the Vermont Lions Club for a grant of up to $30,000 for the division of the Hall project from the Prince George Region Development account. It is. Okay. Is there any discussion? Hmm? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Is there anything in the reading file that Council wishes to bring forward? Yes, Councillor. Thanks to CBT for their new program, the new heritage program. Yes. We certainly can use that. Uh, hopefully, I, I know I alerted staff ASAP for 
our heritage building of the museum. So mm -hmm. I think they're probably on it. Oh, I'm sure that they are. Councilor Rammer will know because he's on the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 8.1 accounts payable report recommendation that the April 2017 accounts payable report be accepted for information. Where's the council's wish? Blanchett and Torgerson. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Agenda item 8.2, information regarding committees and commissions. And the recommendation is that the report regarding a proposed airport commission be accepted for information. Torgerson and Blanchett. Is there any discussion? Any comments? None? Okay, all in favor? Carried. Eight point three. Marshall. Yes. Excuse myself, please. Pecuniary interest. Thank you. Okay, we have two recommendations. One that this report be received, and two that a waiver of the minimum ten percent frontage rule be granted to one. 07-222-3 BC Limited for lots 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28 within their proposed 37 lot subdivision in lot A, district lot 7355, Caribou District Plan EPP 61378. What is Council's wish? Removing the resolution, moved by Councillor Blanchett, seconded by Councillor Salt, and is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. I guess we can invite Councillor Torgerson back. He heard the bell. He heard the bell. <laughs> oh, he heard the bell. <laughs> okay. Listen to the Who's loud this time? Agenda item 8.4 correspondence to NAV Canada. And we have a recommendation that the staff report regarding correspondence to NAV Canada be accepted for information purposes. Okay, Reimer and Lam uh, Salt. And is there any discussion on this? Hope we can get it moving along. Yes, Councillor Rummer. <coughs> I think that the uh, letter was well written. Yes. And uh, <coughs> certainly time that action be taken on that. Okay, any further discussion or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. And one more, Your Worship. Yes. Oh, you're, you're okay. <laughs> Same reason to be carried. Okay. Okay, agenda item 8.5, proposed development variance permit for 1805 Dogwood Street. Recommendation that development variance permit 0317 to vary sections 2.02, 2.06, and 2.08 of the Vailmont Subdivision and Development Servicing Bylaw for the proposed subdivision at 1805 Dogwood Street, legally, legally described as Lot A, District Lot 7355, Caribou District Plan EPP 613. 78 be given final approval. Okay, Blanchett and Salt. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Do you think the Councillor heard that? He should have. <laughs> he did. Welcome back. Is that it for this evening now? I believe so. <laughs> Good. Agenda item 8.6, Village of Vailmount Municipal Insurance Request for Proposals. We have a recommendation that staff be directed to proceed with the Municipal Insurance RFP and that the terms be for three years with an option to renew for an additional two years. What is Council's wish? We need to move for discussion anyway. Okay, Blanchett and Torgerson. And it's open for discussion. Yes, Councillor Reimer. <clears throat> I am fundamentally opposed to the idea of granting any insurance brokerage any more than one year. Um, <clears throat> while I realize it is a lot of work, the, uh, it is part of the work, 
there is significant premium involved, enough premium for the, that makes it worthwhile for any broker to go out and make sure they have um, received the best coverage uh, for the best rate with the best companies. And by best companies, I mean companies that will not only take premium, but also pay forthwith when claims arise. And uh, <clears throat> anything more than a year, even if we wrote into the agreement that it would have to be reviewed if there was a 10% rate increase or more, that still leaves open a 9.5% rate increase for the next two years, that's unacceptable, especially if commercial rates go down. Um, it, uh, it needs to be reviewed every year. It needs to be um, responsibly done every year for the sake of our tax dollars and <clears throat> um, to make sure that we have adequate coverage every year. There's too much at stake to give somebody a carte blanche for, for three years. Um, so it's not the brokerage that's actually guaranteeing anything, it's the insurance company and the reinsurance companies. So um, <clears throat> I, I would be fundamentally opposed to that. Thank you. Any further comments? Councillor Torgerson? I concur with Councillor Reimer. Uh, things change over the term of a three-year span. Uh, we grow, we shrink, our assets rise and fall. Uh, having, you know, uh, risk also gets greater or lessens and it can always be renegotiated on an annual basis with your broker. Thank you. Any further comments? Councillor Blanchett, did, I see you nodding. Did you have something to say? No, I agree. Okay, and Councillor Stoltz, you have nothing further to add? No. Okay. And Mr. Administrator, did you want to? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, what staff are just looking for is the uh, okay. approval to proceed with an RFP. Okay. If it be one year, whatever amount that be. Okay. So um, the motion was that, uh, oh, just that staff proceed with the municipal insurance request for proposals. Um, we can break that down into uh, two, um, point A, that they proceed with the municipal insurance RFP, and I'll take a vote on that, and that the terms be for three years with an option to renew for an additional two years. Uh, I'll make that into request a second um, motion on that, positively, and then council just defeat, defeats it. Okay? So. Um, I want to, yes. Could we not just amend the motion? We could. I'll make the motion that. Okay. I'll make the motion that the staff be directed to proceed with the municipal insurance RFP, okay. and that the terms be for one year, and no option to renew. Okay. Could I have a second for that, please, Councillor Tor Councillor Torgerson? You have that, Ms. Shepherd. Okay. Councillors Rammer and Torgerson have amended the motion to. Uh, a one-year term. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Agenda item 8.7. And uh, once again, this is a request for local area service, service extension in the regional district of Fraser Fort George. And all motions have to be positive. You, one cannot um, make a negative motion. So I should uh, request that council pay specific uh, attention to the first, center, first sentence there. So I'll take a motion, please, for, to put it on the floor. Councillors Blanchett and Torgerson. Can I Discussion? Certainly. move that council approve the extension of the village water service outside the village boundary, specifically to 2020 Hillside Mine Road? Mm -hmm. Regional District of Fraser Fort George, legally described as Lot A, District Lot 7354, Caribou District Plan, BCP 
27480. Yes, that's fine. Okay. So is there any discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Defeated. Thank you. Okay, we move on to the Funky Goat Eatery, and uh, this Worship. is a public. <clears throat> yes. You have uh, to skip ahead because public hearing. Oh, that's right. It's not till seven thirty. Okay. Brought that, and Mr. Simmons reminded me this afternoon that this was a timed item, but it's the first time that we're doing it that way here. So, agenda t item ten point one, and council reports. I'll start with. Um, Councilor Torgerson this time. Very quiet couple of weeks for myself. I had a Varda meeting uh, on the 10th and I participated in a uh, Columbia Operations Conference call with BC Hydro on the 16th. Okay, thank you. Councilor Salt. Uh, I have a little more reporting but actually not a whole lot uh, because I was away last meeting. So I did attend the Regional Emergency Management Committee of the Whole on April 25th. Then I attended uh, the Trans-Canada Yellowhead Highway Association AGM and uh, we had a good turnout, so a really good year and some exciting times to come. And then I attended the NCLJ AGM and Convention in Terrace the first week of May and very busy, hectic week as well, but Good networking again, meeting new people, sharing ideas and, and commonalities and mm -hmm. things to bring back and, and do here. And that's it for Council. Okay, thank you. Councillor Varner. I was at the uh, Economic Development Committee meeting on May 11th, where we uh, did clarify Commission Committee again. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Councillor Blanchett. Um, just on the 15th, I drove up to McBride for RVSS and then I flew back here with my hair on fire to attend the uh, Children and Youth Mental Health meeting. Thank you very much. Okay, I too attended the Economic Development Committee uh, meeting on May the 11th and uh, I'm pleased with uh, the commitment that the members give to uh, EDC. And on, um, let's see, last week, the Regional District of Fraser Fort George, the board meeting was held in McBride, and they will be here in July and Mackenzie in September, and this is because it's the 50th anniversary of the Regional District of Fraser Fort George Incorporation. And it was, uh, it was really very nice to have to drive only 90 kilometers to the, um, to meet them at the Grizzly, uh, Giggling Grizzly, and then the board meeting, and uh, come back the same day instead of the usual two and a half days that it takes. It was a very interesting meeting. There was a, a great deal of representation from the public, and I think to uh, the highlight was uh, Principal Derek Shaw brought students with him that he had taken to Mexico to build a house for poor people. And he said it was uh, very um, gratifying to see that the material, lumber, came was British Columbia produced. So, and uh, I also had the pleasure of uh, two of their students meeting them that I've coordinated uh, to uh, go to uh, Encounters with Canada in Ottawa. One, is, one has been, not from this school district, but north central British Columbia. And the other one is from McBride. So, and we also attended, um, at least I did anyway, the um, the Mount Curling Club, the presentation and information that they gave through the Regional uh, District of Fraser Fort George uh, staff to um, request that uh, a service, that the Regional District of Fraser Fort George uh, accept it as a service. And at the board meeting in um, McBride last Thursday, the process continues that it will eventually proceed to a referendum that the people of Vailmount and immediate area up to Tijon, I think, will be voting in the referendum. So, and that's it. So, a motion please that reports uh, from uh, Mayor and Councillors Blanchett, Rymer, Salt and Torgerson be adopted. Thank you. Blanchett and Salt. 
Okay, all in favor? Carried. Agenda item 12.1. Outstanding Council Resolutions. Recommendation that Council accepts the list of outstanding previous Council Resolutions. Salt and Blanchett. Is there any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favour? Carried. Agenda Item 13.1, Calendar of Events for May and June 2017. There is no motion required, but does anyone have any questions? Well, we'll go on to public comment. Um, the, the, um, the people will be given an opportunity to speak uh, during the um, public hearing. Yes. So this public comment is on items considered by Council as part of the approved agenda. Is there any public comment? Well, okay. We have Recess we'll take a recess until 7.30 for the uh, bylaws and policies. Call the uh, public hearing to order, please. I shall uh, read the uh, hearing statement first. A public hearing is being convened pursuant to the terms of the Local Government Act prior to consideration of each of the following items. One, final approval of street vendor permit 01-17, alternative location application for the Funky Goat Eatery. Two, official community plan, amendment bylaw number 765, 2017. Three, village of Vale Mount zoning amendment bylaw number 768, 2017. Four, village of Vale Mount zoning amendment bylaw number 770, 2017. At a public hearing, any person present who believes that his or her property or interest in property may be affected by a matter being considered shall be given an opportunity to be heard on the matter contained in the proposal. However, it is important that all who speak at this meeting restrict their remarks to matters contained in the proposal and it is my responsibility as the chairperson of this meeting to ensure that all remarks are so restricted. Those of you who wish to speak concerning the proposal should, at the appropriate time, commence your address to the Council and meeting by clearly stating your name. Then you may give us the benefit of your views concerning the proposal. Members of Council may, if they so wish, ask questions of you following your presentation. However, the main function of the Council members this evening is to listen to the views of the public. It is not the function of Council at a public hearing to debate the merits of a proposal. Everyone who deems his or her interest in property to be affected shall be given the opportunity to be heard at this meeting. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making his or her views known. At the conclusion of a public hearing, Council may, without further notice, give whatever effect Council believes proper to the representation made at the hearing. During the course of a public hearing, people sometimes tend to become enthusiastic or emotional. Regardless of whether you favor or oppose any particular application or argument, please refrain from applause or other expressions of emotion. Restraint enables others whose views may or may not coincide with your own to exercise their right to express their views and enables all views expressed to be heard in an, as impartial a forum as possible. And so I'm opening up the public hearing and uh, to presentation from administration, please. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So, first public hearing this evening is in regards to the Funky Goat Eatery. Uh, back in 2014, the owner, Mr. David Grant, was granted permission by council to operate at his current location of 1214 Fifth Avenue. Um, that's beside the former Shop Museum building. He was given an expiry of May 2017. Um, he would like to continue operating at this location and at the April 25th regular meeting of council he submitted a request um, to continue operating there for a period of up to three more years. Uh, at that meeting council granted initial approval of Mr. Grant's request. Since that time adjacent property owners have been notified of the proposal and residents have been invited to provide feedback at this evening's public hearing. Uh, prior to council considering final approval of this request. Thank you. Are there any letters to be presented? I do have one here, Your Worship. Okay. Uh, this is from Lorelei Schneider, 1201 4th Avenue. 
Dear Mayor and Council, as property owner and resident adjacent to 1214 Fifth Avenue, I wish to express my concern about the application to allow the Funky Goat Eatery to operate up to three years, seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. While I do not have any concern with the applicant conducting business at the above noted address, I am concerned about three issues. At times during the busy summer season, I find that customers of the Funky Goat, as well as patrons from other businesses, are parking adjacent to our rear yard on the Village Boulevard. There is also a noise issue, being that the operator has a truck idling for quite some time while he loads up prior to leaving for the night, creating a nuisance if we're outside enjoying our backyard. The other issue of concern is that we have witnessed patrons of the Funky Goat urinating in the back alley directly behind our residence, which is obviously quite unpleasant. While I recognize that Belmont does not have an anti-idling bylaw, if I could have assurance from the applicant that he will do his best to limit the idling, that would be satisfactory. The parking issue may be addressed by posting a new parking sign between our property and Cedar Street. I am, however, unsure on what solutions there are for the lack of washroom facilities. I thank you for considering my concern and hope that you can work with the applicant towards the solution. Respectfully, Lorelai Schneider. Thank you. And now it's uh, time for public comments. Does anyone have a comment to make with respect to this uh, request? Okay. Hearing none, I close the public hearing. The recommendation is that if there are no major issues arising from the public hearing, it would be in order that final approval be given for the Funky Goat Eatery to continue operations at its current location of 1214 Fifth, uh, Fifth Avenue for up to three years, this has to be specified by Council, and subject to compliance with the Village of Vailmount Street Vendor Bylaw, or what is Council's wish? Councillor Torgerson. I'll move that final approval be given for the Funky Goat Eatery to continue operations at its current location of 1214 Fifth Avenue for up to three years, subject to compliance with the Village of Elmont Street vendor bylaw and uh, with the hopes that the proponent can work with both adjacent property owners and the public to assure that perhaps even the washing facilities at Centennial Park can be utilized. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Salt. Any further discussion? Councillor Reimer and Councillor Blanchett next. Uh, <clears throat> if there is another complaint like this, a uh, subsequent complaint, um, we have the authority to, uh, first of all, close it down, mm -hmm. um, and certainly to uh, issue a warning letter to the operator to say, address these problems or you will be shut down um, under this term, sorry. So <coughs> with that in mind, I think that the, um, uh, that Lorelei's letter should be addressed and should be, she should be given assurance that these matters are serious that they will be dealt with, and if there's <clears throat> any future um, violation of these where it impacts the neighbors, yeah. that uh, that there will be consequences, it, and it, and that they should be free to make those um, uh, comments if that happens again, so that uh, we're not waiting three years before we find this out. It shouldn't have gone on that this long. Anything further, Councillor? That's okay, Councillor Blanchett. That's pretty much what I was going to ask. Um, did the letter go to um, the owner of the eatery, mm -hmm. saying the concerns and that they need to be addressed? So, is there any further discussion, or you're ready to for the question? Okay. All in favor of the motion as amended? Carried. Agenda item 9.1, Village of Vermont, Official Community Plan Amendment Bylaw Number 765-2017. And I'm opening the public hearing for that and a presentation from the administration, Mr. Simmons. Thank you, Your Worship. <laughs> Glad to see everything back. 
<laughs> okay, this is a community plan amendment which was uh, directed by council, uh, housekeeping type bylaw to change the community plan a little bit to meet with current, uh, today's current uh, legislation and what's happening around Vailmont. Ultimately, the council's uh, decided that with the Vailmont Glacier Destination Resort coming on stream that a complete community plan rewrite will be required at that time. And that's quite an expensive proposal, so we're able to buy a bit of time by this sort of a housekeeping amendment battle. The process, of course, uh, took quite a while. We had an open house. Uh, some of the people here were at the open house with their comments. Uh, after first reading, we went to what they call a public consultation. And again, uh, there were, were some comments there. What we've done is um, come up with a couple of little amendments that uh, address some of the concerns raised at the public consultation. If council uh, agrees with these little amendments and gives third reading to the community plan amendment bylaw t tonight. Then we go through another little process, which we kind of have already done, but we're going to formalize it by checking with the capital expenditure plan and the waste management plan and a couple other things that legislation requires we do before council can adopt it. Again, it's uh, I've been through this with virtually everybody that's been here. Is this is um, a housekeeping bylaw in that we got rid of the old Canoe Mountain resort uh, references that were at about the same stage as Vailmont Glacier Resort at, at the time and we replaced them with Vailmont Glacier Destination Resort. We uh, updated some of the data, school, um, jobs, population and things like that. We revised a few of the phrases to make it a little easier to understand. We included one um, fairly hard clause in the commercial central business district which allows council then to adopt a concurrent zoning bylaw having to do with residential uses in a commercial zone. The amendments, the two amendments that came out of uh, the public consultation, one had to do with uh, alternative energy sources and admittedly there wasn't much included in the in the the original draft because there wasn't much happening right in the village within the village boundaries. So what we've done is propose this very small amendment that says the village will support stuff that's happening outside the boundaries as well. The other uh, item was affordable housing and we actually went and did a fair amount of research on this. Um, most of the other jurisdictions that we checked have, we have virtually the same things. We expanded, one of the little amendments is an expansion on the seniors' facets of affordable housing to see if we can make it a little clearer for the public and for council in terms of support. So uh, these are very small amendments and council can give, make the amendment and then give the bylaw third reading as amended if they so choose. Uh, I think that's in general terms about the, the whole process that we're going through and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Are there any letters to be presented? No? All right, we're open for public comments. Are there any public comments with respect to the uh, official community plan? Dear Mayor and Council, I'm, uh, my name is Rashmi Narayan and uh, as uh, Chair of the Housing Committee uh, appointed by Council, I'd like to read our recommendations to Council. Uh, we could not submit this in writing before the deadline of, uh, for the agenda for today's meeting because we only met last Thursday afternoon. So the Housing Committee recommends changing Section 5.3.5 on affordable rental and special needs housing by deleting the proposed tradition of the following sentences. Senior levels of government are the prime source of funding to deal with issues of dwelling costs and homelessness and the village of Vailmont does not provide or manage housing. So the committee recommends that the deletion of the above sentences for two reasons. Uh, one, in order to secure funds for affordable housing, the village of Vailmont needs to demonstrate a willingness in principle to support the development of affordable housing. 
And the second sentence uh, precludes options like creation of a Belmont Housing Authority as a suitable organization to create and manage affordable housing for Belmont. Housing Strategies Inc. Uh, recommended in the Housing Assessment and Needs Study that Council consider creating a Municipal Housing Authority. This recommendation, along with others, was accepted by Council in February 2016. Uh, that's all uh, the comment I have from the Housing Committee. Thank you. Does Council uh, have any questions? Or, oh, are there any further co uh, public comments? Sorry. Yes. Um, this, this including bylaw number 768 specifically to the... No, okay. Okay. Council, any questions? Okay. Then uh, if there are no further public comments, I'm going to close the public hearing. And a recommendation, if no major issues arise from the public hearing, it would be in order that the Village of Vermont OCP Amendment Bylaw Number 765, 2017, be given third reading. What is Council's wish? Yes. Uh, how do I do this? I move that the Village of Vermont Official Community Plan be given third reading, uh, with further recommendations being considered from the Village of Vermont Housing Committee. Is that acceptable? Yeah, like that. Yeah, I'd like to see the, what she read. I mean, I couldn't write it all down, so. Okay. Yeah. If we could uh, get a copy. May, uh, you may ask questions, or, you know, um, before I close the uh, public hearing. Of, of the presenter, yes, Mr. Simmons. I think you've actually closed the hearing, haven't you? Yes, I, th I did. Might, it, might I suggest that? Yeah. That there's two amendments in your report, one to do with the alternative sources of energy, and another to do with the particular addition to the seniors housing section. Mm -hmm. That you consider giving third reading with those amendments, but also, if you're in agreement with uh, particularly the removal of the uh, sentences about senior levels of government and prime sources of funding to deal with them, you know, and that if you're in agreement with getting rid of that. But that is a third, and these are very small amendments. So basically, if you wish, you could give a third reading with those amendments. Okay. If you, if you choose. Okay. Okay. Yes, does Councillor Reimer? I believe it is senior levels of government and only senior levels of government, in other words, provincial, federal, that actually do have the funding um, and that as a local government um, that our role is to facilitate by way of zoning and and uh, bylaws to make areas available but <clears throat> um, local government um, cannot be involved in funding I think so it is correct that senior levels of government and only senior levels of government uh, fund no matter, no matter whether it's in this province or any other province. Um, that's correct. Yes, Councillor. Does that also include foundations and trusts that also have the ability to fund Found set, okay. Go ahead. set housing? Uh, builds and or developments? Councillor Reimer? Um, <clears throat> so if, um, if a foundation um, came to us and said we want to uh, build a certain type of housing in this particular area, um, after looking at their proposal, our, our role would be to facilitate that uh, <clears throat> but those foundations um, do have funds and can access funds from the senior levels of government. Yes. So they would then be treated just like any other developer. They're building something and we would provide a permit and they would go ahead and build it. That is correct. Is there any further discussion? 
What I want, um, I would like it specified to me. Is the recommendation that the village of Valemount taxpayer support affordable housing? That's what I want. Clar I want clarif I seek clarification of that. Do we burden the local taxpayers with the cost of affordable housing? Yes. I didn't hear that in the uh, report. But only the senior levels of government have the ability to fund, to provide the cost of affordable housing. The village of Vailmont does not have that. Ms. Uh, Ms. Councillor Reimer and then Mr. Simmons. So fundamentally over the years, <clears throat> from foundations that I've seen develop housing, whether it's senior level of housing, seniors housing or anything else. The foundation, uh, whoever that is, whether it's a private foundation a, uh, that's uh, put together by a certain denomination or, <clears throat> or interest group or whatever, that foundation has certain amount of funds available to it um, <clears throat> that they come to the table with. Um, could be funded by self-directed RSP money or RIF money or that kind of thing or whatever and then they go to the provincial government and to the federal government and say here's our pool of money this is what we're intending to do with it they go to an area of <clears throat> of the uh, uh, municipality that they want to build this in and say this is what we want to build this is the area we want to build it in and then it's up to the up to us as a local government to say, yes, we'll let you build this in this particular area, subject to these conditions, considering all the, the impacts. And <clears throat> the big problems in a lot of the bigger centers with this kind of thing is, depending on the kind of housing that these foundations want to develop, or the trusts, or whatever, um, the big hurdle they run into is that commonly, uh, the area residents of those areas, if, if they're lower income scale um, type of housing, say not in my backyard, thank you very much. And so now they go try to find another area that they can build this in or come back again. But uh, <clears throat> it is the, the, our role and our support to convince the residents that whatever proposal is being uh, given f for housing development, that this fits in to this particular area that we're considering. And if we can facilitate that, then we've done our job as a local government. That's, that's how I see the picture. Thank you. Mr. Simmons, you want to add something? There was a, uh, I, th I think the first clause is actually just a statement of fact. It's not any particular uh, council policy. So the suggestion of removing it, I don't think it's really, uh, it doesn't really be needed there. It was taken from other jurisdictions, which you put it in. But it's, in effect, it's a statement of fact. The more key one is, is B, work with federal and provincial agencies, the private sector, places of worship, service clubs, and nonprofit societies to promote affordable rental and special needs housing. And that's where you're stating your policy. And uh, the first, First clause, you know, the only reason that we incorporated it was that we have found other juris, a couple of jurisdictions that have done it. And all it does is state a fact, not a, not necessarily a policy of council. So if you wish to amend the bylaw by removing that, it's very easy to do, and you would incorporate it in your final resolution. Okay. Thank you. Is there any further discussion, council? Any questions, Council, of Mr. Simmons? I beg your pardon? Is this that I can't even think? Oh, <laughs> just join in. Okay. Well, yes. So, um, did you work with the Affordable Housing Committee to um, adjust this in the OCP? We did work directly with them. We took into account what they had uh, given to us in the public consultation where they talked about alternative energy and uh, particularly more enhancement of the affordable housing thing. 
Uh, to be quite honest, we did, went through and reviewed other jurisdictions again, and we basically covered everything. We added a bit more on seniors housing, because it was a, a sample from Fernie, I think, wasn't it? Was given to us that was totally related to seniors housing. I thought, well, we could expand on that a little bit, and that's in your report. Um, so we've taken what the Affordable Housing Committee gave us at the time, and again tonight, they've suggested we remove that that clause. Okay. Thank you. That's not a reason. Okay. When I read that clause, uh, Mr. Simmons, I read it that uh, the senior levels of government have the financial ability to uh, produce uh, affordable housing. As the village of Belmont, we do not. That's, that's correct, correct. Yes. Yeah, but in effect, it's a statement of fact. Yes. It's rather than, rather than policy. Yeah. Well, may I ask? Uh, Certainly. Was there something else in your, today, you talked about that clause, but was there something else that I kind of missed a little bit? Um, one thing I'd like, but this is the first official statement of the Housing Committee, the one at the last time was just from me, so I oh. just, just, just so, uh, and the, the, sec, um, the second sentence about, you know, the Vilmont, village of Vilmont does not provide a match housing, mm -hmm. so the, the rationale to delete that sentence was that by having that sentence, it precludes options like create, creating a Vermont housing authority as a suitable organization to create and manage affordable housing for Vermont. And this was one of the recommendations by the consultant, Housing Strategies Inc., uh, when they prepared the report to council and presented recommendations to council that was adopted by council. And so it was just one of the options presented there that council should study further. And so that was a reason by adding that sentence, we don't look at an option, which was a recommendation by the House of okay, so that, that was the rationale for deleting the sentence. Thank you. Okay, I think I understand. Though I don't think either way it would negate whatever council had to do at your, your housing society's request. But if you were more comfortable and you were comfortable with deleting it, I, again, I say it's a statement of fact. It's not part of your policy. So that would be the third minor amendment that you could incorporate in your resolution tonight, okay. if you so desire. Thank you. Did you uh, want to uh, recommend a resolution that Councillor Torgerson is proposing to uh, move? Councillor Torgerson. Pardon? Did you want uh, <laughs> did you want Mr. Simmons to uh, help you with uh, the amendment to uh, the resolution that you were proposing? I think I was pretty spot on. Okay. We have recommendations from the Housing Committee. Okay. We have an amendment uh, from Mr. Simmons. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm comfortable with that. Okay. I, um, my only, um, I still require clarification is there a recommendation that the village of Vailmount actually using our taxpayers' money to provide or construct affordable housing. I want clarification of that. There we have people here who are on fixed incomes who couldn't afford that. Yes. May I ask the question of the chair of the housing committee uh, or, or Mr. Simmons? Ask Mr. Simmons, please. Is there anything in the OCP uh, review that pertains to taxpayers taking on the burden of affordable housing? No, with one exception. That being? That being that the village can consider the creation of a bylaw which will determine what an eligible development is as per section 563 of the Local Government Act. Adoption of this sort of bylaw would allow some reduction in development cost charges. Okay, so it's not necessarily coming out of the taxpayer's pocket but not quite as much as going in. And that will be a separate bylaw created by council, but this community plan then supports that concept, much like that little memo we did for the commercial zones. So now the zoning and other bylaws can be consistent with it. Okay. Okay, uh, Councillor Rahmer. I, I would, I wouldn't have a problem with uh, anything that we could contribute to lessen the cost including a reduction in development cost charges and that kind of thing that we would be able to uh, uh, do that as a community. I think 
if that is a statement of fact, I think for clarity purposes, leaving that <clears throat> comment in and making sure it is a statement of fact and that any future council or anybody in the future can't interpret that as being policy rather than a statement of fact, perhaps it should be left in. Yes, Mr. Smith. Either, either way, you have got money to spend. So whether it's there or not, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and uh, as much as everybody would like to um, just help out everywhere, we, uh, the taxpayers cannot be burdened, particularly when many of them require a lot of assistance, even with the small homes that they have. So, yes. Uh, well, for clarity, the taxpayer is actually paying it, but it's paid through provincial and federal money. That's right. That's right. Yes. I want to call on your worship to counsel that anything that comes before you is going to come forward as a single request, a specific request on land or pro uh, process, which you can discuss and debate about at the time. I'll just uh, comment here um, as a comparison. The village of Vailmount did own a uh, property, and I think it came back to the village through uh, um, taxation sale and the, the property around uh, Cedar and where the uh, seniors housing was constructed. The village gave the land to the province and the province built the uh, apartments there so where, where the seniors have purchased that or rented. That is a way yes. where you can contribute without costing anybody yes. anything. That's right. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Does Councillor have, yes, Councillor Blanchett. I'll second Councillor Torgerson's motion. Okay. Do you want to uh, read that, please, the motion? Uh, if no major issues arise from the public hearing, it would be in order that Village of Belmont official, official community plan amendment bylaw number 765 2017 be given third reading. I, I just have with amendments as reviewed by Mr. Simmons. Okay. And um, before we vote, uh, Councillor Reimer suggested that it be left in. Is, was that correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Simmons. Your Worship, why don't you have a vote on the amendments first? Okay. Okay, the following amendments be incorporated in the draft community plan amendment bylaw. Number one, the expansion on the alternate power sources, which you are having in your report. Number two, the slight expansion in the seniors' housing. And number three, on the removal of the first clause and the senior levels of government, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You can break them into individual motions if you like. Mm -hmm. That'll be amended like this. That's one resolution. That'll be amended like that. Second resolution. That'll be amended like this. Third resolution. And then the final one, give it third reading as amended. Okay. Okay. So, do you want to uh, re read the uh, motion, please? As Mr. Simmons has suggested. I think he's going to have to help me out. On okay, so that's all right. He's enough. he's here. So the first recommendation uh, that amended amendments be included in the draft OCP, including the first one about. There were some phrases of phraseology of uh, greenhouse gas, uh, solar, and wind energy. Up there, you call in the bill. Okay. Again, we commented earlier that we don't, apart from solar power right in the village, um, everything else is just outside, so we had to kind of expand it a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's out in the regional district. So that would be the first one. We add that. Okay, so let's deal with that one first. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll take a separate motion, please, for that amendment. Blanchett and uh, Torgerson. Is there any discussion on that one? Hearing none, all in favor? Okay, now amendment number two. Yes, this, yes. Uh, there was a, um, Ms. Shepard has the, the wording in the report. Okay, uh, yes. Sorry, Mr. Worship, Davey. I can read that out. Oh, uh, the okay. revised clause within section 5.3.5, 5, 
uh, states support the development of more senior housing by encouraging the development community to consider low cost affordable single level residential development through strata subdivision or other means to ensure there is an inventory of homes suitable for seniors in the community thank you could i have a Torgerson and Blanchett, is there any questions or comments? Hearing none. Yes, Councillor Ryan. That relates particularly and only to seniors. To seniors. It's graduation. Yes. Would there be a problem if that related to any housing to be included? Uh, we're seniors and income would all be included. Mr. Simmons? Your Worship, basically, uh, it was specific to seniors, but I, I don't see any problem with looking at it and saying, well, we can do it for seniors, we can do it for somebody else too. The other clauses in there, basically, we work to promote affordable rental and special needs housing. Already sort of covers that, that thing. In order to uh, work a little closer with the affordable housing committee we expanded that seniors thing um just so it's a little clearer for councils to come yeah. but in reality it doesn't matter who you're promoting affordable rental and special needs housing through this community plan amendment and you're also promoting uh, affordable staff and student housing which is a big thing if you're going to get more hotels and resorts and stuff like that so it's already in here you're promoting that so if a developer comes in um, I want to build a big hotel or or, or um, developers up the hill want to have staff housing want their people to live in town if that's part of the village then this community plan or the new one that's being rewritten can certainly apply to it Thank you. does that answer questions yeah. Yeah. I think um, it would be good if the village could do some, you know, have more property that um, could be donated to a senior level of government for them to uh, construct affordable housing. But it has to be clear that the village taxpayers cannot accept that burden. I don't know of any local government, and I've been asking around, that does. Perhaps Vancouver can do that, but they can afford to. And Vancouver works on a different charter as well. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so if there's no further um, comments or questions, I'll take a... Are you ready for the question? For the Second Amendment. Yes, Second Amendment. Yeah. All in favor? And opposed? All right. And Amendment number three. Um, and it is to amend the draft of CP2. I'm not clear whether we want to include the clause regarding federal and provincial funding. Okay. So it would be to amend the OCP draft OCP to remove the clause regarding financial and provincial funding of affordable housing. Okay. And I think Councillor Torgerson made that motion. Okay. And is there a seconder? Second. Councillor Reimer? Okay. Any discussion here? Okay. Yes, Councillor Salt. So the concern about that clause still being in there is that it's going to hinder the ability to have a housing commission, well not commission, what was it? Authority. Authority. It won't hinder that? Your Worship, uh, Council, so I don't believe it will hinder one way or another. Um, it is a statement of fact. But, again, whether it's in or not, it's still there. So. Okay. So if there's no further questions or discussion, all in favor? Carried. All right. Now we um, do the um, that the village of Vilmont official community plan amendment bylaw number 765, 2017, be given third reading as amended. As amended. Okay. Blanchett and Salt. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Thank you. Okay.
Agenda item 9.2, Village of Vailmount Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 768-2017, Residential Use in Commercially Designated Area of Fifth Avenue. I open the public hearing. Presentation from administration, please. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, so, Zoning Amendment Bylaw 768 uh, intends to speak to current residential use and commercial area of Fifth Avenue specifically from Ash to Cedar Street. So uh, just a little bit of history. Back in January, uh, Mr. Simmons, our then interim CIO, suggested an OCP and a, our OCP amendment and a change in the zoning bylaw to clarify the terms of residential use in the commercially designated area of Fifth Avenue. Um, staff was then directed by council to begin an amendment which would ensure that current residential uses within the central business district be permitted indefinitely. Uh, so essentially that's what we've done in the amendments. We've listed the properties that have a current residential use, listed them by legal description, and proposed that um, these properties be permitted to continue a residential use until, until such time that there's commercial use on the subject property for a period of six or more consecutive months. Um, so in doing that, we're giving the property owner the choice to continue indefinitely um, until they choose to continue with the commercial use. Uh, the proposed amendment will also ensure that standard residential accessory uses will be permitted on Fifth Avenue commercial lots with residential use. These amendments were put before council at the April 25th regular meeting and given first and second reading. And we're here, of course, this evening to receive public comment prior to council's consideration of third reading. Thank you. Are there any letters to be presented? No? All right, public comment, yes? Thank you, Mayor Council. Joseph Nusi, 1070 Fifth Avenue. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Village staff, specifically Carlina, for prompt reply to my voicemail and helping to clarify the nature of the proposal and the uh, mainly the motives behind it. Um, I appreciate the forward-looking nature of the proposed changes, but I'd like to close some issues I see in regards to the precedent it may set. I do still have some concerns about the implications of these changes concerns that I think can be remedied by either amending or adding some wording to the proposed bylaw, or at the very least having some confirmation on the public record for future reference. As such, please bear with me as I list my concerns and proposals, at least for the public record. First of all, I'd like to list some disclaimers. 1075th Avenue is owned personally by myself. I currently reside at this residence with a partner and recently born baby. I have no ongoing neighbor feuds with anybody living in proximity of my property. I currently have a small home-based business running out of my house at this address, but it will be moving to a new commercial location within months. I purchased the property in 2007 with long-term plans to build a large commercial building with residential suites upstairs as per zoning and OCP guidelines. It is still my intention to build such a building in the near future, likely within five years. The building will conform to all guidelines as well as the building materials and aesthetic themes promoted by the village on Fifth Avenue. I have absolutely no issues with being surrounded by residential neighbors even as my future commercial plans progress. However, I do want it clarified that the proposed change is to allow permanent residential use on Fifth Avenue commercially zoned properties will come only with the explicit understanding that concerns of a residential nature will in no way affect or even delay consideration for development of a commercial building proposed by myself or any other property owner of commercial lands on Fifth Avenue. Such, such concerns of a strictly residential nature may include, but not be limited to, heights of commercial buildings falling within pre-existing or reasonable commercial guidelines, ease of parking due to increased traffic driven by increased commercial use, specifically opposition to parallel parking, as per the rest of downtown Fifth Avenue, noise generated by commercial traffic, especially as Fifth Avenue becomes more and more busy and business hours stretch into the, into the later evening. 
Opposition to continuing the commercial sidewalks of downtown Fifth Avenue as commercial properties fill out with more commercial buildings. Any concern that would clearly not be an issue if a commercial building were being built at another location surrounded by other commercial buildings. In short, I would like the, the, to clarify, either explicitly in the bylaw, appendix guidelines, or on the public record, that permitting permanent residential use will never translate into accommodation of permanent residential use on Fifth Avenue. This is especially of concern in the scenario where such residential concerns are not forwarded formally, but to potentially find the ear of a symp sympathetic councillors in the future, who may delay a commercial de development by the dreaded over accommodation of unfounded or unentitled concern, or concerns that should have never found an ear in the first place. As I appreciate the forward-looking nature of the proposed changes, specifically the ability to ensure homes destroyed by fire, I ask that we truly make this bylaw forward-looking and solidify the commercial use and development of a still rather gap-toothed looking Fifth Avenue. Thank you. Councillors, do you have any questions for Mr. Nussi? Thank you. Are there any further public comments with respect to this um, bylaw? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. And recommendation that is, if no major issues arise from the public hearing, it would be in order that the Village of Vailmount Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 768 2017 be given third reading. What is Council's wish? Yes, Councillor Reimer. I'll make that motion. Okay. Seconder, please. Councillor Torgerson. And it's open for discussion. Yes, Councillor Salt. Does Mr. Simmons have anything to add after hearing those remarks? Yeah. Go ahead. <coughs> yeah. Your Worship Council. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Goose's comments, uh, I think, are, are well thought out. Uh, what I would suggest to Council is that it's commercially zoned property already. And the residential use is secondary and allowed until such, something happens. These people are paying commercial zone taxes even if they live there on a residential. And if somebody comes in and applies to a building permit for a commercial establishment on there, council says, yeah, it's owned for it, go for it. As simple as that. Um, and it's very doubtful that even the council of a new day would look at it and say, well, how the residential uses can't outweigh the commercial uses in commercial zones. And we're going to see a bit more of this stuff around the village in the near future with the infusion of more interests, where there's areas that per, are commercially zoned, which perhaps are not developed and have been commercially zoned for years. And people in the area maybe don't know what the zoning is, or they've enjoyed the peace and quiet like a residential area, but now there's a commercial operation going there, and it's been zoned for years. So I think you're going to see more and more of that, where council has to support their own zoning. Unless there's a, a move to change that zoning away from commercial and the, and the appropriate public process. So I would suggest that may allay some of Mr. Nussi's concerns that that's what it's zoned for. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yes, Councillor Reimer, you want to see? Uh, you were, yeah, the, the original concern mm -hmm. when this was brought up a number of months ago was where somebody wanted to buy a particular property as a residence mm -hmm. um, and there was concern expressed that in the event um, that uh, there would be a loss of that um, <clears throat> building uh, due to a fire that perhaps that residence could not be rebuilt um, during, in a timely manner uh, given the nature of insurance claims. And I think we've addressed that, um, <clears throat> and uh, that for anybody that chooses to continue to have a residence in there, they can do that um, without any pressure and without any um, undue hardship to them if, if they choose to continue that. Thank you. Anything further from Council? 
I felt when I read that that um, one would not be able to someone who owns a residence there and they are in commercial zoning that they will not be able to object to commercial development. That's the way I read it. Am I correct? Yours does. Yes. It's like if you were in a uh, yeah. trying to put a commercial thing in a residential zone. You yeah. Know, you basically abide by the residential That's zone. right. Yeah. So, as you said, I would hope that that would allay the concerns. Thank you. Council, any further discussion? Yeah, Councilor Reimer. If somebody is getting aged and they lose their hearing, it doesn't matter what goes on next door, they won't hear it anyway, so. <laughs> okay, so do we have a mover and a seconder on this one? We do. We do. Is there any further discussion? Hmm? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. All right, agenda item 9.3, Village of Vailmount Zoning Amendment bylaw number 770-2017. Amendments to Rural Residential to Zoning. And I'm opening the public hearing and a presentation from administration, please, Ms. Shepherd. Thank you, Your Worship. Mm. Uh, last one this evening. Um, this amendment to the zoning bylaw speaks to uh, second dwellings. So there are two proposals involved here. Uh, one is to amend the RR2 designation um, in regards to second dwellings give it a little more flexibility. Um, currently in RR2, you're allowed a second dwelling, but it's an accessory, and it can be no larger than 600 square feet. We are proposing that you can have a second dwelling. It's not an accessory, it's a principal building, and it can be up to 750 square feet. We just want to open that up a little bit, so that's what we're proposing. The second part of the amendment is to actually uh, rezone a specific property, uh, 935 Bevan Crescent, from mixed residential to RR2, as they wish to put a second dwelling on their property. Um, so I, I think we've pretty much covered what the changes, um, the changes that are proposed, sorry. Um, we took this before council, April 25th, and it received first and second reading. Um, we're here this evening to receive public feedback and then put it back before council uh, for third reading. Okay, thank you. Are there any letters to be read into the hearing? I do, I have one okay. from the property owners. Okay. Uh, so from Dwayne and Diana Smith, 935 Evan Crescent. Dear Village of Vailmount Mayor and Council, we are looking for your support and approval of adding a small residence approximately 750 square feet to our current location at 935 Evan Crescent. Plan 23725, Lot 15, District Lot 7355. So that we may build a home for our aging grandparents. They currently own a property in the community but are struggling to maintain it due to their age. My husband, myself, Elmer, and Doreen have discussed the options of a secondary residence on our property and feel it would be in their best interest to be where a family can help and support their changing needs. We are looking to build a unit that will be a single story home, easy access, and mobility, which includes two bedrooms and bath with a kitchen and living room. We are requesting 750 square feet of space for two bedrooms due to sleeping issues. The property that we live on is 0.93 acres and currently has our home and a garage located on it. They moved from San Ramon three and a half years ago due to issues of maintaining their place to be closer to family for help and support. With building a place on the lot, there should not be any issues of maintenance for them as it would be a new building and the land is already maintained by us. They still have the freedom of living independently and have the comfort of knowing that family is near. It is, it is important for aging seniors to have the support and care from their families to still maintain their independence and continue to do the things they love without the pressure of having to do it on their own. We believe that we can achieve this if you allow us to provide this home on our property for our aging grandparents. 
It would give them the options to garden if they wanted, continue to have their dog in their home, and have lots of family gathering and generational sharing between them and the family. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact us. And thank you for your considerations on this matter. We look forward to hearing from you on this matter. Sincerely, Dwayne and Diana Smith. Thank you. No further letters? No. Okay, it's open now for public comment. Yes. Um, just uh, make a comment for me. Um, I'm Rashmi. Please uh, come to the podium. Uh, I'm Rashmi Narayan and I live in Belmont. And I, I support this uh, rezoning partly from a housing, uh, with my housing hat on and housing interest. I think it allows more diversity in the housing market uh, in doing that. And I think council should open, instead of having selected bylaws addressing one property at a time, uh, it should consider having uh, this option of a second dwelling on a property based on parcel area. If the parcel area is big enough to allow a second home, a uh, second primary residence, then that would be useful in uh, being more flexible and allowing housing options for the community. That's my comment. Thank you. Any further comments from the public? Okay. Hearing none, I'll close the... Oh, sorry, does uh, anyone from council have any questions? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Recommendation is that if no major issues arise from the public hearing, it would be in order that the Village of Vermont Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 770-2017 be given third reading. Okay, moved by Councillor Blanchett, seconded by Councillor Salt. I have just one question. Were the neighbors uh, of, the, of that particular residential area notified? Absolutely. Okay, and there were no objections. Good. That's fine then. So, any further discussion? Yes, Councillor Reimer? I do have a <coughs> yes. question. Uh, is this a minimum lot size that we are requiring for this kind of development? Yes. That's Which is? It's half an acre. Half an acre? Yes. Okay. okay. Anything further? Ready for the question? All in favor? Carried. Well, there we go. We're done. I will um, take a motion now that um, council proceed to an in-camera meeting. Recommendation that council proceed to an in-camera council meeting for consideration of one item for section 91C of the community charter to discuss matters related to labor relations or other employee relations. Motion, please. Okay, Reimer and Blanchett. Okay, all in favor? Carried.